Dr. Menton holds a PhD in cell biology from Brown University. As an associate professor of anatomy at Washington School of Medicine in St. Louis, Dr. Menton was awarded Professor of the Year in 1998. He is currently a full-time speaker and author for Answers in Genesis. In Form to Fly, Dr. Menton details the amazing design features of birds, while illustrating that the current view of bird evolution via dinosaurs is far from probable and goes against all observable evidence. But well, let's begin with Scripture. That's the way we ought to begin. Now look at the world through biblical glasses. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, we learn straight away how birds came to be. There it tells us God created every winged fowl after its kind, and God saw that it was good. The birds would have been created on the fifth day of creation along with the sea creatures. And the land-dwelling creatures were created on the sixth day. And all dinosaurs are land-dwelling creatures. Therefore, birds were created separately on a separate day from dinosaurs. And that pretty well settles right there, the dinosaur bird uh, question. But we'll have occasion to touch on it as we go along here. Well, this is the standard sort of evolutionary chart of how birds are supposed to have evolved. We call these phylogenetic trees that show sort of in a branching way, how things evolve. Now, don't expect to see phylogenetic trees in nature. They do not grow in nature. They mainly only grow in biology textbooks. <laughs> but in the phylogenetic tree, uh, down at the bottom, you have a reptile. And uh, nowadays, they believe that reptile would have been a, a dinosaur, uh, a theropod-type dinosaur. We'll talk about that more. And that from that dinosaur creature, uh, all of the birds sort of grew and branched off. And can't you just see, looking at the tree, how they all just sort of branched off from one another? Uh, here's a branch point right here. You, you go this way, we, you get a swan, and you go this way, and you get uh, a hummingbird. And I know you're really itching to know what the common ancestor of the swan and the hummingbird is. And if you look right there at the node of the tree, uh, that's where you will uh, see the common ancestors right in there. Now, some of you in the cheap seats are not able to see that. You may want to talk to the people down front. No, you see, the whole point is, is that there is no information in the nodes of the branches. This is the only area that would be of any interest. The tips of the branches merely show birds that are alive and well today, except for the first two all the way down at the bottom here. These birds are extinct, Archaeopteryx and Hesperornis but we do see them in the fossil record. The rest of these are birds that we see today flying around. And the tree is just simply an artistic uh, expression. There is no data in the tree, whatever. And indeed, none is shown. It's just sort of trying to give you an idea how they might have branched off without actually providing any evidence or data for it. In fact, I say that since an artist painted that silly tree and since they don't exist in nature, uh, let's just see what the whole thing would look like without the tree. And when you do that, you get something which is technically known as a bunch of birds. <laughs> so let's consider, down at the bottom is this little reptile. And this reptile is a dinosaur, and today evolutionists are just extraordinarily confident that birds evolved from reptiles. For example, uh, here, 
uh, in a book, 101 Questions About Dinosaurs, published in 1996, we read a very confident statement by an evolutionist that says, because birds are dinosaurs, did you get that? They didn't say we think they might be, or many people suspect that, or it's just simply stated, because birds are dinosaurs, dinosaurs have not died out goes on to say, nevertheless, dinosaurs are still alive and very successful. Birds are their direct descendants of small meat-eating dinosaurs and in modern biological classification are considered to be a subset of the dinosauria. So they've actually put the birds under the dinosaurs and uh, classification. In this sense, dinosaurs are still very successful because there are more than 8,000 species alive today. You got that? More than 8,000 species of dinosaurs alive today uh, feeding in your bird feeders even as we speak. <laughs> then why is it the evolutionists get so upset when we say man and dinosaurs live together? <laughs> I know what you're asking. You're asking now, which group of dinosaurs did the birds evolve from? After all, the dinosaurs can be classified. And there's two basically different kinds of dinosaurs, and they're seen in the oval here. Uh, by the way, the reptiles that fly, the pterodactyls, are not dinosaurs. The reptiles that live in the sea, uh, plesiosaurs, pliosaurs, what have you, they are not considered dinosaurs either. They're really neat animals. They're just not dinosaurs. All dinosaurs walk on top of their legs. They're not like other lizards that are elbow out. They walk on top of their legs, and they are all land-dwelling creatures, and all dinosaurs are grouped into two major groups, the lizard-hipped and the bird-hipped. Oh, you can see where I'm going with this, can't you? The bird-hipped dinosaurs. In fact, some of the bird-hipped dinosaurs are actually called bird-hipped, bird-footed dinosaurs. So the lizard-hipped and the bird-hipped. This is really the difference between the two. On your left is the lizard-hipped, if you want the fancy name, it's Cerician. Doesn't that sound a lot more impressive when you say Cerician? Uh, that's the lizard hip, and the lizard hip is pretty much like uh, a mammal's hips, or our hips. There are three bones that are fused together there. You have the ilium, that's the bone that you can feel right under your belt, the hip bone. And then you have the pubic bone, uh, those are the bones that come together in front. And then you have the ischium bone, and at the end we call that the ischial tuberosity, and you are all setting on your ischial tuberosities right now. <laughs> Those three bones are fused together. Now, in a bird, look at the dinosaur on the right. This is a bird hip dinosaur. It too has the ilium, just as the first one did. It too has a pubic bone. It too has an ischium. But what's different is that there's a process that comes from the pubic bone that's part of the pubic bone that comes back to the ischium. And this is true of birds and uh, it's true of the bird-hipped dinosaurs. This is a lizard-hipped dinosaur. An example would be, for example, a T-Rex. And you can see the uh, hip bone here, this area right in here. This is leg bone coming down here. I'm not getting too technical, am I? I didn't think so, no. Uh, this is the ilium up here, and uh, these are the pubic bones over here, and this is the uh, ischium. And if we... Uh, Compare that to a bird hip dinosaur, in this case a stegosaurus. Uh, we can see the same bony components, except there's a part of the pubic bone that comes back with the ischium. Now, did I tell you there was going to be an exam? Yeah, you see us teachers are not paid a whole lot, and one of the few joys we get in life is persecuting students. <laughs> and we do that with exams. And in exams, we ask trick questions because we love to fail people. Which group of dinosaurs did the birds evolve from? Do evolutionists say they evolved from the bird-hipped or the lizard-hipped? Good. There are a lot of you getting this right. It's very disappointing to me as a teacher. You're getting this right. <laughs> yes, they, they evolved, according to evolutionists, from the lizard hip, not the bird hip. They're so specialized, they say, that they couldn't have given rise. And yet, in the textbooks, they make a big thing out of, see how much like a bird these bird-hipped dinosaurs are. This is an example of one of the lizard hip dinosaurs that's been implicated at one time or another as the ancestor of birds. Uh, this is what we call a theropod type dinosaur, and uh, uh, basically means a sort of mammal footed dinosaur. 
And all of these theropods have a few things in common that I think makes them very, very poor candidates for evolving into birds. Uh, for one thing, if you put feathers on this creature, uh, kick him in the tail, he's not flying. <laughs> I mean, this thing isn't going to fly. First of all, look at the size of the... I mean, look at the absolutely immense... I mean, look at this huge... Do I dare say rump? Yeah. I mean, he's not getting off the ground. And then a big, heavy tail that extends beyond that uh, heavy rump there has these big, massive hind limbs, but look at the front limbs. I mean, on most theropod dinosaurs, like the T-Rex, uh, the front limbs are so small, we're not sure what they did with them. It doesn't appear that they could have walked on them. They're too short, they couldn't have fed with them. They really couldn't have grasped their prey with them, but I'll tell you one thing they absolutely did not do with them.